Over the years, I've tested many products on my channel, but I've never done a review for a laser engraver. The unit sent to me by this company, Nasum. It's an A5 Pro laser engraver. And as usual, no promises were made to this company, so you can expect an honest review. According to the manufacturer, it has the ability to cut through half inch wood, engraver etched dark stone, plastics, as well as some metals. This laser engraver is not one of the cheaper units made out of plastic. It's made of heavy extruded aluminum alloy. It has a five, five and a half watt fixed focus laser. Engraving accuracy of 0.01 millimeter. Has a work area size of 410 millimeters by 400 millimeters, which is roughly 16 inches square. The laser for this engraver uses spot compression technology. The laser used for this unit is a 445 nanometer, which is a blue violet color. This engraver is compatible with Windows, Mac, or Linux operating systems. Now the first thing I did when this product was sent to me was go to Amazon and look over the product reviews. Typically I'll show products with a rating of 4 out of 5 or higher, but for this one I noticed it was 3 out of 5, so I went through all the comments to see why the rating was a little lower than I'd like to see, and I discovered that people either had a problem with the instruction manual, they thought that the assembly procedure was a little more difficult than it should have been, or the wrong power cord was included. So what I'm going to do is take everything apart out of this box, assemble everything for you using time lapse so you can see it all go together. And when I'm all finished, I'm going to give you my opinion, what I think about the instruction manual, how easy it was or not easy to put everything together, and if the power cord that was included was the correct cord or the incorrect cord. Okay, let's open up the box, take everything out and begin the assembly process. Okay, it's all together. It only took me about a half an hour. It would have taken me less time if I didn't have to move around my tripod with the camera. I figure it would take approximately 20 minutes, maybe a little bit less, and that's within the time frame that the manufacturer stated. They said between 10 and 20 minutes to assemble the laser engraver. In my opinion, the instructions were just fine. They made it very easy how to put everything together. The bags were properly labeled with numbers and the numbers corresponded to images in the instruction manual for each step of the assembly process. So no problem with the instructions that I saw for this product. You can see how smoothly this moves. Right here. Everything is tied off using nylon ties so nothing could be pulled out. You don't want to have any of these connectors pull out when the engraver is in operation. Your stepper motors. Back here is your control box. You can see the connection for the USB cable as well as the DC jack. Here's a close up of the frame with the support legs. And over here you can see the bolt that's pressing down on the belt to keep it in position. Plenty of cable on the side to go to the furthest position. And there's a point right over here on the side that stops this entire thing from moving forward. 
and the laser is not touching even though it may appear to be. It's about an eighth of an inch away from the frame. And over here, Everything is very stable. There is a nut that you can adjust on the lower wheel that will take up any play in the assembly to ensure that everything is tight. Right here is a close-up of the rollers and you can see how the belt is routed. Along the top rail over to the laser module. You can see the protective lenses installed. And the construction of these aluminum rails, I have to say, is very good. They're very heavy and very thick. Just like people said on Amazon when they purchased it, the cord was incorrect. And the same thing has happened to me many times in the past with Chinese products. You're going to have to do one or two things. You can either cut the end off and install one of these right here. Very inexpensive, only a couple bucks. Or you can purchase an adapter for about a dollar and a half that goes onto this plug and converts it to a 120 volt receptacle for North American use. The company absolutely needs to get their act together and include the correct cord for the location where the product is going to be sold. If they're not going to have the correct plug end, at least include the adapter. The only thing I needed besides the tools that were included to put this together was a single edge razor blade just to trim off the belt inside this track that was sticking out on both ends. The one thing I really liked is that the company included the software on this USB thumb drive. You have a Windows program, a Mac program, as well as a detailed instruction manual. If you're going to be using Linux, you could use Lightburn or other open source programs that you can download online. Now for the demonstrations, I'm going to be using my Linux operating system. You could use Windows or Mac. Included on the USB thumb drive is exactly what you see right here. So you have laser engraving files, laser grbl for Windows, Lightburn for Mac, now I downloaded Lightburn for Linux, it's free for 30 days, and after that, if you'd like to purchase the software, it's 40 bucks. You don't have to use Lightburn, there are other options, but I'll be using it for this demonstration. Over here is the manual that's included, very well written, and over here is a copy of the instruction manual that was inside the shipping box. I'm going to run the program. Should be good to go, let's see. All right, 27 days for the trial. Okay. Now when you first set this up, it's going to take you through a procedure on setting it up properly. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna arrange the laser module at the front left. You wanna make sure you set it up for the front left. Make sure you choose that option. Once you're connected up, then what you could do is you could take this right over here and you can move this anywhere on this screen, which is your grid, you want to make sure that the carrier that has the laser module on it is not going to be banging into the sidewalls, top or bottom either. So you want to take this pointer and just move it to here, move it to there, move it to the top, move it to the bottom, and then also put it exactly in the center, in this case at 205. Then you want to look at the relation of the laser module inside the framework for the laser engraver. So if I do this, I take this right here, position it right in the middle around 205. It should move right to that position. Perfect. In the event the laser is not in the center, you're going to have to loosen this screw and the one on the opposite side. And very gently, if it needs to go more this way, pull on the belt to bring it more this way and then you can tighten the belt back into position. The same applies for the lower rail. If this gets too close to the top, you could loosen this, slide the belt a little that way, retighten it, and you should be good to go. So let's make sure it doesn't hit the side walls and the top and the bottom. Let's go directly to the top now. Perfect. Down here. Excellent. Now let's go to the right center and to the left center. And if I click over here, it says go to origin. It goes right back to the lower left corner. Now what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm just going to take some letters. I'm just going to do ENM. Click on it. 
And now I can change the size over here. So let's make it pretty small for the demonstration. I don't want to get too carried away with the size. Let's make it 20. All right. And now what I want to do, I can move that around, but say I want to find out exactly where this printing is going to occur. I can just click on this, go to the center. Now you can see the location of where the printing is going to be done directly in the center of the lettering. For the first demonstration, what I'm going to do is print this on stainless steel. So let's go over to here. Let's go to cuts layers. Over here it's on the fill mode. If I put it on line, it's going to give you just the outline of the lettering engraved into the stainless steel. But I want to make sure the lettering is filled up. So I'm going to click on fill. Now it's very important when you're using this, if we go to, let's see, click here, click here, all right. The speed and the power is what determines how well the printing is going to be done or etching how well the engraving is going to be done or even cutting with different materials. So for the stainless steel, you want to set this around 100. And over here, I would also set this between 90 and 100. So let's do that. Hit OK. Now I'm going to position the stainless steel in the exact area and begin etching. Once that's in position, the next thing you need to do is take the spacer and you need to place it right underneath. Let's do that first and we can realign this in a minute. It has to be the correct spacing to get the job done right. Okay. Now we have the correct spacing between the bottom of the laser module and the stainless steel. So let me center the stainless steel and now we're ready to go. Now that this is positioned perfectly on the ruler, the next thing I'm going to do is come over here, put my goggles on, and press start. Here we go. And right here, it took about 14 and a half minutes. Did a beautiful job etching ENM. And this will not come off of that surface. Came out really nice. For the next demonstration, I'm going to be engraving an image into poplar. If you wanted to cut through wood, you'd have to use a very slow speed around 10 and the power at 100. Making multiple passes will allow you to cut directly through the wood. Right here, you can see how nice this came out. If you wanted to make this darker, you can try slowing down the printing speed or increasing the power output. And if you wanted to make it lighter, then you could speed up the printing process or decrease the power output of the laser. Okay, now let's try this on stone. And right here, you can see how beautifully my name was etched into this quartz, and it took less than 15 minutes. Here is a piece of acrylic using a 100 speed setting with power at 35%. And that's it. This laser engraver works very well. I have no complaints. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.